The Center Against Sexual Assault helps many in our community. Then here's what you can do about those extra holiday pounds. Stay safe, keep healthy, here's Lifeline. Hello, I'm Audrey Ching, the Director of Community Prevention, Education and Outreach at the Southern Arizona Center Against Sexual Assault. Sexual assault is a crime that is far too prevalent in our community. One in six women will experience a sexual assault or attempted sexual assault in her lifetime, and most often it is by someone she knows. We know that 19,000 men and boys 12 years and older in the United States were either victims of completed or attempted sexual assault. You're about to meet three members of our community who are survivors of sexual assault. As you watch our video, please remember, if you are a survivor of sexual assault, that we can help you and your family free of charge. I'll tell you how in just a moment. My name is Laura and I was sexually assaulted when I was just a teenager. My name is Lucy, and I am an acquaintance rape survivor. My name is Jim, and at the age of 12, I was sexually abused by a Catholic priest. It was a situation for me where my voice didn't matter. Me saying no didn't work. It wasn't enough. We had um, a little get-together where a couple of our close friends came over and we started drinking margaritas. And I got really drunk and I wound up getting sick and throwing up in the restroom and my friend, who I'd known for three years, went into the restroom with me to hold my hair back. He raped me. But after we got done serving Mass, he invited me into one of the back rooms, uh, one of the little rooms off the sacristy of the church. He started to talk to me about uh, just uh, wanting me to be his friend. He, he uh, took his clothes off and I mean, it was, it was a nightmare. It just was an absolute nightmare. He held me down, uh, face, face uh, down on the floor by the back of my neck, and then uh, he entered me from behind. I just wanted him to be finished and, and let me out of the room. And uh, when he finally did, um, I think I went home and, and, and went into isolation. And I didn't tell anyone after it happened. I was ashamed, I was afraid of what people would think, and I felt really guilty for what had happened. It got to the point where I was even thinking about killing myself. And many people have said to me in my life, why don't you just get on with life? Why don't you just forget it, put it behind you? I wish I could. I believe that if I had known about the center, I would have had someone that I could have talked to and a place to get information that I needed. Um, instead, I did it all on my own, and it was really hard. I almost didn't make it. Gosh, if there had been a center, you know, when I was growing up, you know, when I was, you know, 15, you know, if there had been flyers at my school, you know, if my teachers had been aware, you know, might have made a huge difference. I don't know what I would have done without the center. Just to be able to talk about it and to, uh, to be supported, not judged, and kind of loved through this, this uh, first stages of, of really telling my story uh, was immensely uh, powerful for me. It's so hard to even measure what this center 
gives to this community and what it gives to every single individual. Sexual trauma in whatever form takes you off your feet. But if there are people out there committed to and dedicated to telling their stories, committed and dedicated to educating people as to what risks are out there and signs to look for to help folks, if there are people out there willing to do that, then it, it, it's what our community needs. Please let us help. The Southern Arizona Center Against Sexual Assault will help you shatter the silence. We have many services to offer. Center Against Sexual Assault, how can I help you? There is a bilingual crisis line that operates all day, every day. Walk-in crisis intervention service operating during business hours. Round-the-clock hospital advocacy and medical forensic exams. Continuing mental health therapy for those who are eligible. Prevention, education, and outreach services. And all our services are free of charge. We also operate Suvos Valley, an office located in Tucson Southside that provides bilingual, bicultural services. Remember, you are not alone. We believe you. It is not your fault. Our crisis line is always open, and please check out our website. This is your chance to shatter the silence. I just lost 65 pounds this summer. You, you know, you're looking at a winner right here. That's me, this guy. You know, I was eating potato chips and they were all on my chest hair and I was just like, man, you're a bum. I was brushing my teeth and I'm a male, I'm not a female, and I had a, a breasts. A breasts, okay? I, I didn't like that. Cut out all breads, cut out all carbs, and I walked. And then I started to run. You run slow. Pe people think they can't do it and they can. Say you weigh 180 pounds, you're gonna burn 2,000 calories a day laying in bed doing nothing. So you add to that and you count calories. You might walk and say, oh, I only burned 200. But you know, it all adds up, it all adds up. One pound is 3,500 calories. So if you can cut back 3,500 calories a week, you're gonna lose a pound a week. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot. Cut out the soda. Drink Diet Coke. What's the matter with Diet Coke? It's good. I never liked vegetables. I started eating vegetables. You just eat to get full. You can eat as many vegetables as you want. You can eat chicken. Just, you know, all the things they say are true. Go out and buy a book, read the book. You know what I mean? I can usually get girls by my talk, but now I can really get them. Because, you know, I look good. You know, do you have a Band-Aid? Because I'm cut. Do you have a sewing kit? Because I'm ripped. I feel a lot better. Once you get lighter, you get way more energy. All that stuff that they say is true, and it's not as hard as you think. You'll feel a lot better about yourself. I look in the mirror all the time. That's all I do now, I look in the mirror, because you know, not for nothing, but I feel I look pretty good right now. I used to take a lot of drugs and all that stuff and follow the Grateful Dead around like some kind of weird freako, but not anymore. I'm all about my health now. <laughs> Wasn't he great? Hi, I'm Shauna Page, City of Tucson's Wellness Coordinator. Today, we're talking about avoiding those dreaded holiday weight gains and find ways to keep your holidays healthy as well as happy. Awareness is key. Social gatherings can increase your intake by as much as 2,000 extra calories a day. Researchers have found that we're not gaining the average five to seven pounds we once thought, but we're not losing the pounds we are gaining each year. As the years increase, so do the pounds and we end up with serious health issues like heart disease or type two diabetes. What's a big help to us when we do tend to overeat? It's not as hard as you think. Just push away from the table and get walking. Here's a great way to get motivated. Get a pedometer and track your steps each day. Increase your steps as you feel comfortable. Walk at least 30 minutes. Use a work break to take the stairs. And make a new holiday tradition of walking before you indulge in the dessert. Aim for 10,000 steps a day but build up slowly. Hey, 
Come to think of it, wouldn't a pedometer be a great gift idea? Also, watch what you drink. A mocha flavored coffee and eggnog can add a whopping 300 to 500 calories to your day. So try switching to a low fat version and hold that whip. Remember, alcohol has seven calories per gram and that's without a mixer. Beer is about 150 calories and a pina colada can top you out at 300 calories. Yikes. Try sparkling water with lime and maybe a splash of wine. Or there's always the non-alcoholic version. Eat before you go to the party. That means a meal that's low in fat and high in fiber. And that will help keep you on track while you're at the party. Plan, plan, plan. Your meals, your walking, and your holiday indulgence. If it's your aunt's pumpkin pie, watch what you eat during the day. And just say no to that doggy bag. Give yourself the gift of healthy living this holiday season. Remember, if you fail one day, doesn't mean you will the next. Challenge yourself, get your steps in, and you won't be sorry. I'm Shauna Page, and here's to your healthy holiday season.